CBS Sports and the St. Louis Sports Commission and National Sportsmanship Foundation present a celebration of class and character, honoring Albert Pujols, NFL star running back Warwick Dunn, American Olympic speed skater Brittany Bow, along with those who show extraordinary sportsmanship. Plus, introducing rising country music star Julia Cole. From the historic Steeple Theater in St. Louis, it's the 2022 Museal Awards, presented by Maryville University. Now, Mike Bush. Thank you. Welcome to the Museal Awards, honoring the year's greatest moments of sportsmanship and those who embody class and character. We come to you from St. Louis, one of the great sports cities in America, home to the Cardinals, the Blues, a new Major League Soccer team, and the place where every year we celebrate all that's right in sports. St. Louis is where Stan Musial made his mark as one of baseball's greatest players. These awards carry his name not just because of his on-field excellence, but for how he played the game and the way he treated others. Stan the Man's legacy lives on as we honor those who inspire us through their extraordinary sportsmanship. And we lead off this year's Musical Awards with an indelible moment from 2022, a little league ball player who came through with big league kindness. It's time for fall ball in Springdale, Arkansas. How are you, man? Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for playing with us. And baseball's second season brings together some first time teammates. Isaiah Jarvis and Caden Shelton have never played on the same team. In fact, they're not even from the same state. Kaden, be ready. He hits it hard. But recently, an unexpected moment created an unexpected friendship. They last met in the Little League Southwest Region Championship game, Isaiah playing for Oklahoma and Caden for Texas East, with the winner of the Southwest Region earning a trip to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Isaiah and Caden faced each other in the very first inning of the game. Caden on the mound, Isaiah at the plate. Then with two men on and two strikes. Oh, look out. A pitch that got away. I mean, he went to the ground. The stands just went silent. I mean, like you couldn't hear anything at all. I was just so afraid that he was seriously injured. To everyone's relief, Isaiah was able to get back up and take first base. But Caden was in distress over what had happened. He got up, which I was very happy about that, and he walked over to first base. And then I was had like my glove over my face because I was trying not to show people that I was crying. When batters are hit by pitches in professional baseball, it often leads to bench-clearing brawls. But after clearing the cobwebs, instead of bitterness, Isaiah showed kindness. Say Jarvis, this is such great sportsmanship. I was like, oh, this is a good kid. These are these are parents doing something right because you don't see this. He told me he was okay, so that made me feel a lot better. I think it was just natural reaction because I've been taught my whole life to do that. Back in Arkansas, where Isaiah is playing fall ball, Caden came for a visit. These two foes are now friends. I don't you know, want anybody to forget that this moment could not have happened without Bub's compassion in his heart for Isaiah. Texas East won that regional championship to advance to the Little League World Series. But long after those scores are forgotten, this is the moment that will be remembered. To honor Isaiah, we're thrilled to have with us Perlin, Texas Little League pitcher, Caden Shelton. And accepting the musical, here's Isaiah Jarvis. What did you think when you saw Isaiah come to the mound? When he hugged me, uh, 
it, it just, it was amazing because, I mean, not many people would do that. No, not too many people would. Isaiah, I know you didn't make the Little League World Series, but you were invited to attend the Little League World Series, and you got to see the major leaguers playing in the Little League Classic. What was that experience like for you? It was really fun. I got to get a lot of autographs, and I got to be around a bunch of the Hawaii kids, Texas East kids, all the Little League players that made it to Williamsport, and it was just a really fun time. Isaiah, Caden, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for this great moment of sportsmanship. Thank you. Well, heading into this year's Winter Olympics, speed skater Aaron Jackson was a favorite to bring home a medal for Team USA in the 500 meters. But at the U.S. trials a few weeks before, Jackson slipped in the qualifying race and finished third, and only the top two earned Olympic berths. So despite being ranked number one in the world, Jackson was on the outside looking in. That was until American Brittany Bowe made the most unselfish of decisions. Bo, who finished first in the race, gave up her spot so that Jackson could race in her marquee event in Beijing. This act of generosity had a storybook ending because Jackson won gold and became the first black woman to medal in the sport. I remember getting texts and stuff saying we're gonna have our Olympic team announcement. Everybody's, you know, popping champagne bottles, celebrating. And in that moment, I knew that I couldn't be there celebrating without Erin. She earned and deserved that spot to compete at the Olympics. It is one of the greatest uh, sacrifices and selfless acts that I've ever witnessed in sport. It's one of my most proudest moments as a coach to see an athlete like Brittany give up a spot, a medal spot, potentially, you know, to a teammate. It was about Team USA. An amazing show of sportsmanship and selflessness and like mutual respect. I was just really excited for the world to see like what an amazing person Brittany is. Wow. Present this Musial Award to you for, uh, you know, helping me reach my dreams. Thanks, EJ. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so sorry we can't be in St. Louis this evening as we are over in Europe racing on the World Cup circuit, but uh, wow, what, what an honor. Coming up, Seattle Kraken fan Nadia Popovich's keen eyes saves a life on the opposing bench. And later, NFL star running back Warwick Dunn. Maryville University is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Musial Awards. In these trying times, the values of civility, compassion, and sportsmanship remind us of what truly matters in sports and in life. Stan the Man embodied those values, and Maryville is honored to stand by his legacy. So on behalf of the second fastest growing university in the nation, Maryville welcomes you to the Musial Awards, the most important night in all of sports. Here at the Musial Awards, sportsmanship comes in many forms. Among them, caring for others, even if they're on the opposing team's bench. So we were taken by the heroic actions of a Seattle hockey fan whose instincts and persistence made a life-saving difference. My name is Brian Rad Hamilton of the Vancouver Canucks. I'm the assistant equipment manager. He's the greatest. He's the absolute greatest. He's my right-hand guy. It's the very first game in Seattle. It's crazy. When you're on the bench during a game and the fans are banging or whatever, you tune it out. At the end of the second period, there's a fan standing there with a message on their cell phone pressed against the glass and they're knocking on the glass. Is that for me? Is that for someone else? The message on the phone was, the mole on the back of your neck is cancer. You should see a doctor. I kind of fluffed it off until I asked Jess about it. So once he gets home from that game, he has me take a look at the back of his neck to see if like, there's anything to this. And I said, yeah, there's definitely something there that's unusual. It was pretty obvious to me straight away that this was not a normal looking lesion. So I said to him, this has to come off and we'll send it off for, uh, for pathology and see what we get. Dr. Bovard calls and tells me it's malignant melanoma in situ, which is the best of the worst. And so she was right. I dodged a bullet. He said, if we did this five years from now, we're having a completely different conversation. 
We knew it was time to go public because we absolutely wanted to find this person. The tweet of the letter had 10 million impressions. It went everywhere. We found her. Well, that took an hour. The first story I saw was from the ladies of the crack in, in the uh, newsfeed on my Facebook. Immediately, I knew it was my daughter, and I <laughs> started screaming. Someone mentioned, you know, your daughter's famous, you need to wake her up. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're right, I need to wake up my daughter. Her mom was trying to get a hold of her, but she actually couldn't reach her because she was, Natty was still sleeping um, because she was working all night at a suicide prevention hotline. I woke up to a call from my mom and she said, go and check the Kraken Twitter. Right there pinned is Brian's beautiful message. This is me he's talking about and he wants to meet me. Are you okay with shaking hands? Yes. Uh, I, yeah. I'm so happy that we were able to let you know that what you did saved a life. This afternoon, we found that fan. Nadia, the Kraken, and the Canucks cannot thank you enough. And together, we would like to give you $10,000 toward your college tuition. We know you're going to make a phenomenal doctor. Here's this woman who did such a heroic act for me, and then I find out, well, that's, that's just what she does. Nadia Popovici, she saves lives. She didn't care where I was from. She didn't care that I was on the opposite team. She cared about my life. If I have the power to make any positive change in someone's life, um, even if they are on the Canucks and I'm on the Kraken, if we can do something good for one another, we should take that opportunity. To present our next musical award, please welcome the Assistant Equipment Manager for the Vancouver Canucks, Brian Red Hamilton. And from Seattle, Musial Award recipient Nadia Popovich. Thank you both for being here. I know this was quite a day for you, Red. You, you made the trip all the way from this morning, because you're in the middle of the NHL season from Vancouver. Yes, I did. I, I, we had a game last night, and I flew out this morning, but I wouldn't miss it. You, you wanted to be here. You thought oh, it was important to be here. 100% I wanted to be here. Uh, the wonderful thing about everything that's happened since Nadia tapped on the glass is that I'm in good health, and I've had an amazing opportunity to not only me say thank you, but the world to say thank you to Nadia. So Nadia, kind of take me through what was going through your mind. You saw this. I mean, you had to have a lot of guts to even mention it and then not know if anything was going to even come, if, if it would even pay heed. When I first saw the mole, I, I knew immediately that this was something concerning. And in that moment, I knew that if that was my dad out there, I would want someone to say something. And I, I was so lucky that he listened to me in all of my Kraken gear. I mean, <laughs> head to toe, I was covered. I'm guessing this $10,000 scholarship means an awful lot. I, I could not thank the Canucks and the Kraken enough and the hockey community enough. And one of the best things about melanoma is that it is ex aggressive, but it is preventable. And you all can learn how to do the same thing. You're a hero. Thank you both for being here. We really do appreciate it and congratulations on the Musial Award. Thank Nadia you. and Red. Coming up, power lifter competitors band together to help create change. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you at maryville.edu. Edward Jones, life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. And Lexus, experience amazing. So we continue now with another standout moment of sportsmanship from the past year. This one occurring in Mississippi. There, we found a group of high school powerlifters 
whose strength includes a profound sense of fairness and respect. In Bruce, Mississippi, kindness is a source of strength. 16-year-old Diamond Campbell may very well be one of the strongest people in Bruce. She's been powerlifting since the sixth grade. I had older friends who did powerlifting. They were like, it's a really cool experience. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go out. I'm going to try it. And I loved it. This past season, Diamond made it all the way to the state finals. And after her first exercise of the championship, Diamond was feeling confident. I thought I did, you know, great. And I could see nothing but like red lights, just red. But Diamond's first slip was disqualified, not because there was something wrong with the exercise. It was disqualified because she had beads in her hair. For years, there's been a rule preventing lifters from wearing certain types of headgear, but the rule banning beads was new, and Diamond has been adorning her hair with beads since she was a little girl. You know, hair beads and accessories are part of the African-American culture. But Diamond had to get the beads out of her hair to stay in the competition, and she had just minutes to do it. I just start grabbing her hair and try to take the beads out. What happened next at the powerlifting championships lifted everybody inside the Mississippi Coliseum. Next thing I know, I got like eight people's hands in my head and they were all just pulling them out. This is how it was described on the local news. Girls from schools Diamond was competing against gathered around her to help take the beads out in time for her next lift. Hello, Georgia. What's up, how are y'all? Weeks Welcome. later, a reunion of sorts, and Diamond got the chance to say thank you to her opponents turned friends. I didn't have anything working against me when I went up to lift, so it wasn't fair for her to have that against her. Diamond, who ended up in fourth in that state meet, is already training for next season, and she won't have to worry about her hair. Thanks to the efforts of these young women, the rule banning beads has been removed. In Mississippi, some young powerlifters showing that their greatest quality is strength of character. Here to help recognize her competitors, we're so glad to have with us Diamond Campbell. And let's salute the athletes who came to Diamond's aid at the state championship. Georgia Robertson, Demaria Moore, Jasmine Stamper, Kara Robertson, and Syriana Jones. Any one of you can answer this. I just want to know what's going through your mind. You hear this is happening to your competitor, someone you're trying to beat. So what's going through your mind? Why did you jump up to help? Whenever, personally, whenever we went to meet, it was always, even if they're your competitors, support them. It's like we worked so hard to get there. And I, they should have told you. And I thought, well, at least I can just try to make it ease, ease the burden. And what does it mean to you that that rule's changed, Diamond? It means a lot, because, I mean, now girls who live, they don't have to be discriminated by beads. I mean, I can, if we have to take time and go down the list of things that'll, you know, discriminate women, I just took one off the list, so I'm just <laughs> doing my... Thank you all for being here. Congratulations. Diamond, thank you very much. Guests at this year's Museal Awards made their entrance on the Worldwide Technology Red Carpet. Worldwide Technology. Make a new world happen. Coming up, NFL star Warwick Dunn. His work off the field has been his true calling. And later, Brett Phillips and Chloe Grimes, a very special friendship. Now, the Musial Award for Extraordinary Character is one of two special honors we annually bestow. It recognizes not a particular moment of sportsmanship, 
but rather one's overall body of work when it comes to class, kindness, humility, and perseverance. And this year, we are proud to present the award to Warwick Dunn, whose on-field brilliance is matched by what he's done off the field. As a record setter at Florida State and three-time pro bowler in the NFL, Warwick personified excellence, and all along, he's made a transformative impact, harnessing the power of sports to help others. Doug pops free, 25, he is to the 35, he's to the 40 yard, 35, Warwick down to the 10, five, touchdown, Florida State. Warwick was a legend, man. He helped them their rookie, I think his rookie year at Florida State won a national championship, and then he became this mythical figure. Very simple, worked on the player, was 5'8", 180 pounds, and gained 10,000 yards. There's only 20 plus players that have gained 10,000 yards. He's one of them. There's not that many 10,000 yard rushers out there, and not many of them. I don't think any of them look like him. Yeah, I think most people think about Warwick and they remember the great runs he's had at Florida State or, you know, a run at Tampa Bay or the Falcons. I think his greatest runs are not on the playing field, but what he's done in the community. You know, how do you actually translate and how do you transfer that, you know, off the field for those things that you actually do great? When the world sort of deals you a hand and it deals you a hurdle, you know, how do you transition, you know, that that's true sportsmanship, that's true character all wrapped up in one. Warwick Dunn is a role model in our community. Over 200 homes, over 25 years. He's putting his words and his love into action in the community and leaving an amazing legacy in memory of his mother. He took a dream of his mom that she never, unfortunately, had a chance to uh, experience, and he made it the dream of so many other families and parents. I think the reason he is the way he is, especially with his charity um, outreach, is because he raised his five siblings, you know, with his grandmother since he was 18 years old when his mom was killed in the line of duty. I think it changed him. All of this is yours, okay? The number of families and, and individuals that he's helped along the way, it's really it's been inspiring, it's special. You like the color? I like it. Thank Girl, I spent so much time decorating. Whew. He's got a soft heart for people, and he's been doing this practically probably all his life, is taking care of other people. And that's what I think about when I think about his character as uh, one of giving. Warwick wakes up every day trying to be impactful, but he doesn't try to be impactful to his brand. He tries to be impactful to others. I wish more athletes and more celebrities saw it that way. He is the ultimate class act. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 2022 Musical Award for Extraordinary Character, Warwick Dunn. As you were watching that video and all the people saying the things that they say, what goes through your mind? I'm still surprised and shocked a little bit. I mean, those individuals, they know me. They uh, have, Rich McKay drafted me at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rende was my uh, roommate, you know, rookie year in Tampa. And, you know, I think they just really understand that I'm not driven off uh, attention, media, awards, you know, I just like doing things just because it's the right thing to do. And I learned that early in life. Um, you know, thank you. But, but I, would, I would say I, I did learn that early in life. And, you know, my grandmother's here. She's 85 years old. She's like the perfect example. So, you know, and she, she's just one of the, the pillars that has just taught me that, and also the city of Baton Rouge. When I lost my mom, they started a fund for us to be able to pay bills. So they really wrapped their arms around us, the family, the city of Baton Rouge, and taught me what it means to care about your neighbor. So. This idea of character and sportsmanship, I mean, you obviously do it off the field, but from all your ex-teammates, even the opposition, that was kind of what they say you were all about even on the field. Well, you know, when you're playing, you're competing. You know, I, of course, I wasn't thinking about, hey, I'm gonna give a guy a hand up when I knock him down, but 
Um, you know, I cared about the person that I was playing against. I mean, I, I didn't have any ill will towards anyone. I just felt like, you know, we're all playing a game that we love. You know, we all need to just take care of each other. But I played it, you know, 100%. And, and when you have to block these legends that I've been had to block, you know, sometimes you're going to hit them a little hard. And, and you know, <laughs> just give them a hand up, say, I'll see you next play. Yeah. So, you know, just keep it together. Warwick Dunn, thank you so much for being here. We're honored to have you, and congratulations. We go inside the Lexus Lounge, where this year's Musial Award honorees came together to experience amazing. I just want to be able to build healthier minds, healthier bodies, build healthier communities overall. You don't necessarily have to become best friends with the other team. Have good sportsmanship. We just got to be good. You, too, can experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Coming up, a very special Aaron Judge home run. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you, at maryville.edu. And worldwide technology, make a new world happen. One of the biggest home runs of this past baseball season was Aaron Judge's 62nd, breaking Roger Maris's American League record. For the Musial Awards, that's actually not the Judge home run that stands out. Of all the ones the Yankee superstar hit, it's actually his ninth of the season we'll remember most. Why is that? Well, check out what happened when that blast landed in the outfield seats. The Yankees in their traditional road grays. New York in navy black letters across the front. My name is Derek Alexander Rodriguez Tori. I'm from Venezuela. My favorite player is 99, Aaron Judge. This is the wall of prized possessions and the Derek Jeter poster. My name is Derek because my dad's favorite player was Derek Jeter. Me and my wife, I told her, your first kid's name will be Derek. It's like a prenup contract or something like that. That's a go! And here's the payoff. My name is Mike Lanzalotta, uh, avid Blue Jays fan. My first baseball I got when I was 12 years old with my grandfather actually at the game. So that was pretty special. Ever since that moment, I've been chasing that, I guess you could say hi ever since. At the old We go to road games with my family. You know, I, I remember one in Detroit when Vladdy hit a foul ball and uh, a Detroit fan caught it and gave it to my daughter. And it was like, wow, man, to see that look on her face when she got that from an opposing player. Yeah, whenever I'm at a game, if there's ever kids around me, I try to get a ball any way I can. And now it defines me. <laughs> I went with my dad to the game. We just thought it was going to be a normal game. The atmosphere was great in the game. Obviously, it's the Yankees. We see Caesar and his uh, his son, Derek, whom we didn't know at the time. Immediately, I kind of gravitated towards this kid. I said, one way or another, we're going to get you a ball. Usually, it's from the bullpen. They throw it up to you. If it's a home run, that those are special balls. We'll see. Aaron Judge came out to bat in the seventh. Noah had him on two strikes and boom, right away. I knew it was coming to me. Drill to left field. And I just yelled, for some reason, I don't know why, I got it, I, it's mine, I got it, I got it. And then Michael tried to catch it, he dropped it, he dropped all his beer. He just turned around and gave it to me and that was it. There's a clip that's going viral, a little boy got the home run ball, he was crying in the stands. So it was a Toronto fan who caught the ball, an adult, and gives it to a child a who is jersey. wearing your jersey. That's pretty cool. I got to check out that video. That's special. Once I got a chance to hear about it and watch the video, it was, <laughs> wow. You know, what an incredible gesture. Any baseball fan, just share a special moment like that that I know both those guys will never forget. I have to continue it, and then that person continues it, and then everyone continues the act of kindness and the world will just be a better place. So joining us from Toronto, say hello to Derek and Cesar Rodriguez. 
And how about you guys handle the introduction of our next Musial Award recipient? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for my friend, Mike Lanzalotta! When you gave the ball to Derek and he gave you that big hug, just tell me what was going through your mind. Oh, I don't know how I didn't start crying myself. <laughs> um, it was all a whirlwind. I think adrenaline just really took over, and uh, you know, I was just—I had to make true to my word. You know, I promised him the ball, and uh, uh, you know, it was a home run ball, and I kind of cheered for a bit, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Derek, you get to meet Aaron Judge in that moment, and again, you were very emotional. Tell us about that moment for you. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's like your life is a bread, and that is just the patty. Make it a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you very much. Derek and Cesar, thank you very much. And congratulations. We go from a heartwarming gesture in the stands to a magical moment on the diamond that gave rise to a special friendship between a pro ball player and a young fan. On this day at AutoZone Park in Memphis, there's a player who seems out of his league. Outfielder Brett Phillips once had the game-winning hit in the World Series. But even as he now toils in the upside down, the AAA minors, you'll never get him to complain. I just feel so blessed each and every day to be able to do what I've been able to do. And besides, today he's got a very special guest. You, know, you want to meet my friends? Nine-year-old Chloe Grimes traveled all the way from St. Petersburg, Florida to see him. You got this, right? Girl. Chloe's quite a ball player in her own right. She can hit, she can pitch, and she would much rather run the bases than have doctors run any more tests. She's got a really, really rare type of cancer. It's called pleuropulmonary blastoma. There's less than 20 cases reported worldwide a year. She's been fighting that cancer on and off since she was two which is why her friends and family call her Princess Warrior. What gives you that strength? I just believe in myself, and I think I can do it. That spirit is why the Tampa Bay Rays earlier this season invited Chloe to throw out the first pitch to her favorite player. Two strikes. Jansen. That is in the center field. Tampa Bay wins it. Brett Phillips' walk-off hit won Game 4 of the 2020 World Series against the Dodgers, and Chloe loved the way he celebrated. He had, like, sideways, and his hair was, like, out, like... <laughs> this is someone who's battling cancer, and she's shown up with good energy. It just, by it, it changed my perspective. Oh, you, you got a bracelet. Chloe even brought Brett a gift. I'm going to wear it tonight, all right? It's gonna bring me good luck, huh? A bracelet with the slogan, Rally for Chloe, our Princess Warrior. I am joined right now by Chloe Grimes herself. And then on the game broadcast, while Chloe and her mom were being interviewed, a night to remember had a moment that no one there will ever forget. They, um, they were there the first time, they come on the floor, they bring us Poppy. Chloe, do you know what just happened? the chance to meet Chloe for the first time and she's battling cancer and she brought me these gifts. <laughs> she wrote my name on a softball and Chloe, you're an inspiration. Like, holy cow. I'm, I think that's the farthest ball, hardest ball, ball I've hit in my career.
But this wasn't just a moment in life. The two have become friends for life. When Chloe had her most recent cancer surgery, Brett was at her bedside. I've never seen anything like it. He's got a heart of gold, and he's honestly the most genuine person I think I've ever met. Brett Phillips has since been traded and sent to the minors, but their bond is now unbreakable. She shows up every day with love and energy and how she treats people. Like, there's no reason that I can't continue playing baseball and going through my struggles with a, without a smile on my face. A professional ball player goes to bat for a young girl with cancer and becomes part of a winning team. Please welcome from St. Petersburg, Florida, Jackie and Joey Grimes. It's a privilege to recognize Brett for his generosity and his decency, and it's an honor to celebrate Chloe for her courage and perseverance. They are an inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, Brett Phillips and Chloe Grimes. So great to see you guys again. Chloe, how are you feeling? Everybody wants to know how you're doing. Awesome. <laughs> That's good. That's great. And Brett, let's just talk about this relationship. I mean, it's one thing to meet a young girl with cancer on the field before a game, but that wasn't it for you. This made a mark on, on you, and you wanted it to continue. She has brought great perspective to my life and to expand on that. In the game of baseball, we're always told, control what you can control, all right? And that's the, that's the hardest thing to do, especially when you're not performing and not doing well. And when I, when I say she brought great perspective to my life, like I said in the video, you have a girl who's nine years old battling cancer for the second, second time in her life, shows up, each and every day with that smile on her face, right? regardless of her circumstances. I mean, that it's so inspiring. We heard you, we heard you say it in, in the piece, but you kind of have a mantra, baseball is fun. It's just, it's, it's, it's meant to be fun. And we put so much pressure on ourselves to be the best each and every day and to perform, but to have perspective like little Chloe in my life, um, it's, it's easy to keep the, the game fun now. But you know, before I, we leave this stage, I thought it would be a great opportunity with thousands of people here and then possibly millions of people watching. Uh, as we take a step off the stage, I would just ask you guys uh, if you can find in any of you to Say a prayer for little Chloe as, as we walk away. She's, you know, still battling cancer. And, uh, I want her to, to, to grow up and live a great life. So thank you all. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you so much. Coming up, Albert Pujols goes past 700 on his way to the Lifetime Achievement Award. Representing the Musial family, please welcome Stan's granddaughter, Lindsay Musial Sears. Albert Pujols reminds me of my grandfather in so many ways. Both men played 22 seasons in the major leagues, both retired as Cardinals, and what a fun final season that was this year. <laughs> Both Albert and my grandfather played more than 3,000 games during their careers. And both men understood that who they are off the field matters just as much, if not more, than what they do on the field, which has given them both a special place in the heart of all St. Louisans. 
For that reason, and so many more, my family and I are proud that Albert Pujols is this year's recipient of the Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award, the highest award for sportsmanship. In St. Louis, they still tell the stories of Hall of Famer Stan Musial for his greatness on the field and his kindness off of it. He drives this one. But a new chapter has been written with that same theme of greatness and kindness. When it comes to hitting, Albert Pujols is on Major League Baseball's Mount Rushmore. Pujols sets one in the air. It's 700! But like Stan Musial, what he did off the field mattered just as much. I see the connection between Stan and Albert really through character, through their heart, through giving. In 2005, Albert established the Pujols Family Foundation, which had two goals. First, help improve the lives of the impoverished in his native Dominican Republic. And the foundation's other goal, serving those living with Down syndrome. Is really a product of Albert's heart for his daughter, Isabella, who has Down syndrome. The foundation sponsors dozens of events from bowling tournaments to prom nights. You want this one? Oh, we love you, Albert. He's a role model, and so the fact that he's helping so many people off the field and, and doing so many great things, I mean, you can't help but want to follow in his footsteps. He also shows respect for the history of the game which is why he always made time for Stan Musial when Stan would come to the ballpark with his grandson. Albert came to me and said, you know, anytime you guys come down, please come get me whatever I am doing and I will stop and I want to see your grandfather. I, I want to have that time with him. The Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award is the pinnacle honor at the Musial Awards and it recognizes a sports figure who embodies the dignity, generosity and civility synonymous with Stan the man. It only seems fitting that we honor number six by giving the award to number five, Albert Pujols. And we are honored to have the Musial family with us tonight to present the Lifetime Achievement Award, including several of Stan's children and grandchildren. Our thanks to them for being here tonight. And now, the recipient of the 2022 Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship, Albert Pujols. wondering when you see the whole Musial family here to present this award, what's that do to your heart? I felt that the Musial family adopted me as their, one of their own. Um, so humble and honor to be here tonight. I thank God for allowing me to have this opportunity to receive this award. I think Cardinal fans got particular joy out of seeing the joy that you seem to have. It, it just seemed like a joyous year for you. Uh, it, and I still felt like uh, it's a dream that I haven't wake up yet. Um, it was just a pretty amazing season uh, to be able to come back here to St. Louis and just uh, celebrate my last year, 22 years, which is a long time for sure. <laughs> and uh, I know that I was a little disappointed, sort of the fans that we didn't accomplish our goal, which is winning a championship. But I'm sure, you know, that clubhouse and that group of guys that were there this year, they're going to give a championship to the city pretty soon, hopefully next year. I just thank uh, the Cardinals and Olive Marmo for believing in me and the fans for supporting me day in and day out, whether it's when I was in the starting lineup whether as I was coming with a pinch hit, you know, it was just, I felt that electric energy every single night like it was a playoff game. And to me, that's something that I would take to my grave with me.
and to all of you that are watching, um, you know, millions and millions of people, thank you so much uh, for, for supporting my career and may the Lord God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, Albert Pujols. The Musial Award for Extraordinary Character and Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship are presented thanks to the generosity of Edward Jones. Coming up, she's all about helping others while empowering female athletes. Introducing rising country music star, Julia Cole, here to perform her new single, Supernova. Like a supernova. Please welcome one of country music's rising superstars, singer, songwriter, Julia Cole, here to perform her new single, Supernova a song she wrote to honor tonight's Musial Award recipients. Even when I'm scared to death, even when I hold my breath, I'm still gonna take that step anyway, anyway. When I'm stuck inside my head, feeling like there's no fight left, I'm still gonna give my best anyway, every day. When everyone goes low, oh, I Find the high road, the sky is the limit recipients of the 2022 Musial Awards. And there you have it. On behalf of the St. Louis Sports Commission and the National Sportsmanship Foundation, thank you for joining us for the Musial Awards presented by Maryville University and so long from the Stiefel Theater in St. Louis.